Without a doubt, Hublot is hated by many watch collectors. Simply browsing forums or social media will reveal how frequently Hublot is the target of jokes. Thoughts about why? Even though many of the things for which Hublot is criticized are not distinctive to the brand, the watchmaker nevertheless receives more criticism than is justified. Not that this seems to have any impact on the brand's sales. Why are Hublot watches so despised? Welcome back to Content Promoter. This is Megan. And if you're new to this channel, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell for more upcoming videos like this. Collectors of watches typically have favorite timepieces that they wear the most. They have particular tastes in movement styles and what they deem worthwhile. Hublot watches are nevertheless intensely despised by the community as a whole. These watches are known for being flamboyant and lacking in sophistication and creativity. Even though they occasionally may seem boisterous and offensive, much more is frequently going on. The primary Hublot critics are design, production standards, price or value, and brand reputation. In this video, we'll go over each factor that affects people's hatred of these watches to explain why watch collectors dislike Hublot so much. Let's now analyze each in more detail. Because the Hublot watches are too expensive, watch collectors dislike them. Poorly built, using cheap components and with ugly, unoriginal designs. In addition, Collectors believe it ignores watchmaking's history, customs, and prestige. We think that one of the reasons a blow is so hated is because it helps people form bonds with one another. Everyone needs to find something to hate. But because a blow is such a large company, not everyone hates them. To be clear, people who genuinely enjoy watches are the ones that despise a blow. Let's look back in time to the beginning of everything. Carlo Croco founded Hublot in the 1980s, when it was still a watch brand owned by MDM. Hublot swiftly replaced other watch brands as the preferred option. It is a very modern, futuristic sports watch with a luxury touch. Since the market was only beginning to become used to luxury sports, it was also ideally timed. Patek, the Nautilus, AP, and the Royal Oak were all making their debut simultaneously. In 2004, Jean-Claude Biver, a marketing whiz and titan of the trade, took over Hublot. Four years later, shortly after, the LVMH company bought it. From there, it expanded into a respectable watch brand. But let's take a deeper look at what they have to offer before we analyze their popularity among those who aren't watch enthusiasts. The first watch is the Classic Fusion, created as a more elegant addition to the Hublot range. It has a titanium casing and is 42mm wide. It is not a sports watch despite being water-resistant to 50 meters and powered by an internal caliber hub 1301 movement. However, this manual wind movement is impressive since it has a stunning 90 hours of power reserve. Next up is the Big Bang, their flagship. This one is a well-known Hublot. Its width is 41 millimeters, and its case is made of steel and ceramic. It boasts a 100-meter water resistance rating and an automated chronograph mechanism. The Hub 4300 has a power reserve of 42 hours and 37 joules and beats at a rate of 28,800 beats per hour. The traditional fusion isn't the worst option. The design isn't terrific, but that's how the watch appears. It has an internal action, a tremendous power reserve, and passable finishing. Like a watch, I believe everything is normal and in harmony with itself. The bundle is good, and however, when you look at the price, it is about $12,400. To support it, let's try. Even though the polish isn't as nice, Titanium is an expensive metal to deal with because it's challenging to produce. I fail to see how they can sell this watch for that much money. This gives conventional fusion a favorable appearance. These factors make the watch a chronograph. 
Keep in mind that the expensive 2892 EDA movement covers the watch. I don't have anything against this movement. I think many lower-end watchmakers would be better suited to adopting EDA movements rather than trying to create their in-house activities. But continuing the idea of being stupid by asking about $12,400 or so for a watch without movement is ludicrous. It's just absurd. Now, this watch matches the other pieces in the set. The only problem, and it's a big one, is the cost. Execution, finishing, appearance, and feel aligned with the ETA. For the avoidance of doubt, this is not another ETA attack. This watch should be less expensive. Unfortunately, the finishing on this watch is poor. Poor craftsmanship was used in the construction of this watch. Notice how the bolts are out of alignment? I would expect the bolts included in the price to be well made and properly aligned, even though they may not be perfectly straight. Although the bolt functions flawlessly, its aesthetics must be considered considering the price. You finally pay for that when you achieve that level of watchmaking. I no longer think Hublot's poor reputation among watch lovers is due to this expensive product. We can identify that behavior in a wide range of watch-related scenarios. Instead, I can secretly think that what Hublot stands for is why the watch community hates Hublot so much. The watch community does not like the Hublot advertising, the demographic it aims to reach, and the way of life it promotes. Are you enjoying this video? Then make sure to finish this to know more. But before we continue, if you want your comments to be highlighted, you might try our super thanks or join our membership program. It's funny how non-watch aficionados now view watches as something we acquire to flaunt. I know we tend to generalize a lot. We all have different reasons for appreciating watches. However, a few exceptions exist. We tend to agree that Hublot is all about flaunting watches, and we don't like that. The entire philosophy of Hublot is centered on making absurd amounts of money and flaunting it. That is the style of life that this watch centers around. Even the cost of a fresh hit could be seen as a benefit. Like the size of a timepiece, price is only a barrier to admission. Someone with a little wrist is unlikely to buy a large watch. Someone with a small money account is not likely to buy a pricey watch. So from our perspective, it makes sense that watch lovers hate Hublot. I believe they are marketing an expensive brand that is unattractive to watch enthusiasts. Ultimately, watch collectors expect excellence that includes well-planned designs, in-house movements, distinctive components, and a certain amount of delicacy. Hublot places a lot of emphasis on aesthetics to appeal to watch collectors. Since watch collectors strive to purchase unique and intriguing pieces, this isn't a bad strategy. But given the general lack of originality in Hublot's designs, this suggests that clients are looking for distinctive movements and dials, which Hublot cannot provide. Even if the designs are original but of poor quality, the timepieces are a poor choice for any collector. Hublot watches like the Big Bang, where classic fusion may be fully functional for people who lack the style, but the cost does not accurately reflect the quality of the mechanism. Compared to the price and the quality of their parts and movements, which are challenging to achieve, certain Rolex watches appear to be a bargain. Unfortunately, Hublot has become a brand everyone likes to dislike, which is why watch aficionados detest the company. Many collectors would ignore the brand as a creator of extortionate fashion watches even though it presents itself as a professional watchmaker. Unfortunately, these collectors have some excellent reasons to dislike the brand, such as the excessive pricing, poor quality and attention to detail, and uninspired designs. Hublot also aims to win over customers without actively attempting to establish its reputation or tradition with high-quality watchmaking, another reason why watch collectors dislike the brand. But ultimately, this is just another viewpoint, and there is nothing wrong with admiring and loving Hublot. We'd love to hear your opinions, so please share them in the comment section below. Also, don't forget to give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it.
Again, this is Megan, and thank you for watching. Before you leave, did you know that Hublot's Big Bang is one of the top billionaire luxury watch? Yes, it is. Well, if you want to know the details of why, make sure to click and watch this video here. See you there.